What is a standard electrode potential? Well, the standard electrode potential can be viewed as the pulling power of an electrode for an electron. Now, they are always written as reduction potentials. So this is an important part to get over. Many reactions you intuitively feel just would not go in that direction. That is the way that you write down a reduction potential. So reduction potentials, no matter how unlikely you feel the chemical reaction is, are always expressed in this fashion, as the oxidized species plus electrons going to the reduced species. You cannot have an isolated electrode. Electrodes only work in pairs as part of electrical circuit, and what you measure is the potential difference between the two electrodes. But in order to put these things on some sort of a scale, we have to have a starting point. And often you'll find you want to find something relatively close to the middle of your scale, but ultimately it's going to be pretty arbitrary. And that's what's been done for standard electrode potentials. People have defined the standard electrode potential for this reaction, the reduction of protons with electrons to give dihydrogen as zero. And so every other electrode potential can be measured relative to the electrode potential, the standard reduction potential for hydrogen. And we have to be very careful when we're talking about electrode potentials because they are measured under very specific conditions. And changes to those conditions can very subtly change the electrode potentials that you actually observe. What are standard conditions? Well, standard conditions for the hydrogen electrode are one molar hydrogen chloride solution and one atmosphere of hydrogen gas. And the electrode itself is a piece of platinum black. So Typically, standard electrode potentials comprise solutions of one molar concentration. And if there's a gas involved, then the gas is present at a one atmosphere concentration. What good are these things? Well, if you have an element with a standard reduction potential that is lower than hydrogen, that's telling you that that element is less electronegative than hydrogen. It has less pulling power for electrons than hydrogen does, which obviously is going to translate into a greater tendency for that element to lose electrons. Imagine that you have an iron of zinc, 2 plus, and we have an iron of H plus, a proton in solution, and we add an electron. Where will the electron go? Will it go to the proton? or will it go to the zinc 2 plus cation? So the lower the electrode potential, the less attraction for electrons that electrode has. So if you have a zinc cation and a proton, and the zinc cation or the zinc reduction potential is minus 0.76 compared to the proton, what's the reduction potential for proton? Zero. So which is lower? Minus 0.76 or zero? It's minus 0.76. So zinc is going to lose. Zinc has less electron pulling power than a proton, so zinc will lose the competition for an electron. The electron will go to the proton and generate a hydrogen radical species. If the reduction potential is lower than zero, that means that that element will react with protons to give you dihydrogen gas. There are metals which you can add quite happily to a strongly acidic solution and absolutely nothing happens. Those metals you can now predict very easily because those are the metals that have standard reduction potentials higher than zero. And here's an example. Silver. The standard reduction potential for silver is plus 0.8 so that means that a silver cation will win a competition with a proton for an electron. So if you add protons to a solution or to a solid sample of silver, nothing will happen. You need a stronger oxidizing agent than protons in order to dissolve silver.